Hello everybody, welcome to another video. This one is a little bit controversial. I actually posted the before picture of this on my community section of my YouTube channel and there was pretty mixed reviews. There were some people saying I should leave this the way it is, but I'm gonna show you up close here why I want to give this old gal a bit of a makeover. I love what the previous owner did with the two colors. I love that sort of grungy look, but I wanna try to refine it a little bit. This piece has total art deco vibes. I love some of the hardware. I'm not in love with others. You'll see what I do with that. But let's talk about the construction a little bit. This is not a high-end piece. This is a laminate dresser. You can see on the top here where a bit of the laminate coating has worn off and that's not the same as veneer. There's some pretty big dings and scratches. There are some repairs I need to make to the drawer slides. I actually need to reproduce a couple of these. I'm very thankful to finally have a table saw where I can do repairs like this. There's a little spot of mildew or mold here to take care of. I love these plated brass details. A lot of you really loved the green color, so I am going to keep green. I'm just going to do my own version of this. And what I'm going to try to do with the drawers is make these cheaper wood drawers look like high-end aged mahogany or cherry. It'll take a little bit of time and a few different products to do that, but I'm excited to show you what this piece could be. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, so diving right into this piece, I'm starting as always by taking off the hardware. This hardware did not want to come off. I actually tore a small bit of the wood taking it off, but that's okay, I can repair that. I love these particular pulls. I think they're super cool. You can see that they are brass plated. They're not solid brass, so some of that sort of silvery color is showing through from underneath. But these ones I am definitely keeping and reusing. Having a look at the drawer itself, it is solid wood. It's not the best construction. They have tracks cut into the side, which is how these pull in and out. This drawer bottom needs to be reattached. And you can see on the front here, these strips, they're not wood, they're actually little brass inserts. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with those. Most likely I will keep them as such. Now these wavy handles are the ones I'm not sure about. And at the end, I'm actually going to show you what this piece would look like keeping those. And I'll show you what it looks like replacing those wavy ones with the hardware I think goes better with the piece, which will no doubt be controversial as usual. Pulling these legs off, definitely keeping these. The caps are going to need a little bit of attention, but that's okay. And I'm taking these plates off. They're quite rusty and I want to clean them up a bit before I put them back on. These little details here are just held on by two tiny little nails, so I'm just popping those off. And when I pull these off, I can actually see underneath there is a screw and a lot of glue. So these sort of semi-rounded details, I could take that trim off, but I like it, so I'm gonna be leaving it. But these are definitely gonna need a little bit of attention. Before I get into all of that, I need to thoroughly clean this piece. It's not too bad, it's a little bit dusty, but it's just part of what I do when I start working on a piece. Of this entire piece, there's only this one small little mold spot. I'm not really sure why. Something obviously got wedged there and air flow wasn't happening, but that mold spray works really well. You just, just basically spray it on, let it completely dry. I spray it again and wipe it off and that kills all the mold spores. This is just a very gentle cleaner. I'm not going to be stripping the paint because it's laminate underneath. So I'm just cleaning it really well because I'm going to be scuff sanding it prior to painting. My goal here is to try to get some of these brush marks as flat as possible so I have a, a much smoother finish when I apply my paint. And you can see here when I'm on the edges, I'm not worried about sanding through into the hard board which is underneath that laminate layer. And the reason is the edges are a little bit tattered and torn so I need to try to get that as smooth as possible. Now, if this piece was a veneer top, I wouldn't recommend going this aggressively on the edges so that you don't burn through the veneer. 
Just because it is a fairly cheaply made piece doesn't mean it has to look like it once you refinish it and I find getting those edges very smooth is key to that. There are also some deeper gouges and scratches I'm going to fill later on. Now on the sides of the top here, you can actually see the solid wood trim. So basically there's a solid strip of wood here on the side. There's a solid strip of wood that runs along the back and one along the front as well. The very top of the piece is the hardboard covered with the laminate layer, which you can see here. It's about a quarter of an inch thick roughly. But because these sides are solid wood, I can sand a bit more aggressively here and try to get this big gouge out. Once I have the whole piece scuff sanded and smoothed out, I'm going to take a slightly damp cloth and just try to get some of the excess dust off. I'm going to fill any little gouges that need to be filled, spots like this, leave it to dry and then I'll come back later on and sand with a finer grit, 180. And then once that's done, I'm using a spray sealer here and this is just going to make all of these various surfaces here uniform so that I have one flat uniform layer to paint on. And just as a reminder, I try to list as many of the products as I can in the description of all of my videos. So if you see a product, if I can find a link for it, I will put it down below. So make sure you check there if you see something that you're interested in. These drawers definitely need some love, so what I'm going to be doing is taking them apart. I'm taking the bottom off. These nails are often difficult to get off without ruining the bottom, so I like to apply some pressure from the underside, and then if you just tap the board down, usually the nails will stay in place and you can just pull them out. And I prefer to use a tool like this for taking them off than a hammer, and I will show you why. This nail that I took off with a hammer, you can see the heads are extremely fragile and they bend. That's why I don't often use a hammer for these little nails. I'm using a 150 grit sand pad here to do both sides of the drawer bottom and then I'm actually going to do the inside and outside of the rest of the drawer box. While I was sanding this section here, the slight pressure from the weight of the sander actually separated the drawer side from the face. And I realized that because of the way this is constructed, this is going to be an issue on all of the drawers. So what I opted to do was fill those gaps with wood glue, tap them back together, and then I ended up clamping them. And I did this for all of the drawers. Now here on the drawer face, you can actually really see that laminate coating and it looks like wood grain. It's not veneer, it's a printed wood grain. You can't peel it off, you have to either sand it off or chemically remove it. This particular color, you can see it looks kind of almost lavender. It's actually called lilac and on the back of this dresser it actually says lilac or lilac. <laughs> Everyone pronounces it a little bit differently. Here in Nova Scotia we tend to have a bit of an accent. A lot of times these laminate coatings on the drawer faces are on top of solid wood, but keep in mind it's not usually a very high quality wood. In this case, the two types I believe are birch and poplar. This section is one of the tracks on one of the drawers and you can see it's all gouged up and that is caused from the staples holding the drawer guide sticking out too far and gouging the wood every time you try to pull the drawer in and out. On these rails that I'm not pulling out and replacing, I'm just going to make sure that I tap all of those staples in so that they're not protruding at all. Now this is one of the rails that I need to replace. You can see the profile of it here. <laughs> There's a whole section on the top missing as well as on the back. Now I initially thought I only needed to make two of these, one for each side of this particular drawer, but when I was cleaning earlier I noticed that there was actually another rail that was broken so I actually have to make three of these. I have this scrap piece of solid ash here and that's what I'm going to be using to make these. So first I just cut this to length on my miter saw here. And 
then using the table saw, I cut these at the exact width that I need. Once I have all three cut, I'm just gonna give them a light hand sanding. And then of course, test them to make sure that they're gonna slide freely in the grooves here. So that was the original, and this one's a little bit hard to hold on to, but it does slide freely, so this will definitely work. Okay, so on to the drawer faces. Like I said, I have two different types of wood I'm working with. The curved drawers are a birch plywood, and the large flat drawers on the bottom, as well as the drawers on the sides, those are all poplar. And you can see side by side here, they're very different in grain, they're very different in color and tone. So I'm adding a wood conditioner. This is gonna help my stain absorb more evenly. It's not gonna change the grain, obviously. I'm trying to get these two different types of wood to be very similar in color when I'm done. So as I mentioned, I'm going to try to recreate this green, almost sort of grungy feel that was on the dresser before because so many people liked it. This color is Pressed Fern by Fusion Mineral Paint. And this is the part where I have to tell you to trust the process. This is going to look a lot worse before it gets better. <laughs> It's gonna take a few coats, so I'm applying my first coat, and while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and lightly sand the drawers that I put the wood conditioner on, which is now dry, and ready for stain. So first I'm using General Finishes Gel Stain in the color Nutmeg, and this is a test. <laughs> I wanna see how bad <laughs> this is gonna look with these two different types of wood. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that normally I don't mind having different types of wood on drawer faces. In fact, I usually embrace those differences, but what I want to do here is see if I can figure out a way with stain and toners to make these drawers not only look like they could possibly be the same type of wood, but to make them look like a high-end type of wood, which I'm hoping is going to sort of elevate this dresser a little bit. It's not, like I said, a fancy dresser by any means. I'm going to try to make it look like it could be a fancy dresser. So while that first coat of stain is drying on all of the drawer faces, I'm taking a very fine sand pad here, just smoothing out my first coat of paint, and then I'm adding my second coat. Once the stain had completely dried, I added some Mohawk Vinyl Sealer just to seal up that stain before I put any toner on. So what the toner is going to do is it's going to lightly tint the wood and I used three different colors. I started with Mohawk's Perfect Brown, then I used Dark Walnut Slash Oak, which brought me to this point and you can see on the left is the drawer with just the stain and the one on the right is the one with the two colors of toner. And then I went in with my third color which is Dark Red Walnut. This last one is what gives me that rich, very aged cherry or even mahogany look. Once all the layers of toner were dry, I went in with some pre-cat lacquer and sealed everything up. Now these are products I would normally use on higher quality furniture, but I wanted to sort of push myself and test this theory that sometimes good products can make inferior materials look higher end, if that makes sense. Where these are more expensive materials to use, the vinyl seal sealer, the toners, and the lacquer, I probably wouldn't do it on a lot of lower end pieces, but it was a really fun experiment and I love how it looked. Once everything had set up and dried overnight, I went in and taped off the drawers so that I could use some gold metallic spray paint on these trim pieces. I'm showing this next section. This is me actually vacuuming off my tarp that I paint and spray on. And the reason I'm showing you this is because all of this fine dust is from the toners and the lacquer, so you always want to be wearing a respirator when you're using those. You do not want that in your lungs. So to do my own a little bit more subtle version of the grungy dark wax look that this piece had when I got it, I'm using a product by Art Minds, which is a Michaels brand, and it's a slate wax. It's a dark wax. 
I believe the previous owner got her look by using different colors of paint and almost dry brushing is what it looks like, but I'm using dark wax to kind of get the same effect, but a little bit more subtle. And all I'm doing is applying it to the surface and immediately wiping it off. You can control how intense your dark wax look is in a number of ways. Some people prefer to use a clear wax first, which is what I'm gonna do on the top only. And it just gives you a little bit more control. It doesn't stain the paint as quickly as it would if you just apply the dark wax directly on the paint. You can also use a clear wax to help remove some of the dark wax if you put too much on, but there's a time limit with that. You have to be pretty quick about it. Okay, so back to the hardware. This is going to be controversial, I know it will be. It always is with wavy things, I don't know why. I'm not a fan of wavy hardware, I'm not a fan of wavy trim, but I am going to redo these wavy hardware pieces in addition to adding some new hardware so that the person buying this piece can choose what they like better. And it also will give you guys a chance to see it both with its original hardware and with a bit more of a modern twist on it. I used a 320 grit sand pad to just lightly scuff the surface and then I'm using Design Masters premium metallic paint in the color I believe it's 24 karat gold. So this is the hardware that I'm thinking to replace the wavy bits. I'm still keeping the sort of spiral ones on the side, but I wanted to go a little bit more modern on the rest of the drawers. These are brand new in the package, but they are factory defects. So you can see there's a little bit of discoloration there. So I have no problems with sanding these down a little bit, adding that same spray paint to match. And these will be my alternative pulls <laughs> to the wavy ones. Now I'm not 100% sure if this is the way I would have gone if you guys hadn't loved the green so much. I probably would have done something a little bit lighter, but that's okay. It's fun to kind of step outside of the box sometimes. I'm adding that same slate dark wax to the legs as well, and then I can pop those little metal caps back on the feet. Now here is a side by side of the two poles in question. I prefer the ones on the top, the more modern ones, but I'm going to show you both in the reveal, like I said. If you remember, I sanded down all of these drawers inside and out. They have to be sealed, so I'm using some hemp oil here to just seal those drawers up. And here I'm being stupid and <laughs> caught my paper towel in my little Dremel tool. But what I'm actually doing is trying to remove some of the surface rust from these leg brackets. And you don't have to do this. It's kind of a nice thing to do when they're this bad. You could take it a step further and even polish them or spray paint them. I'm not going to go that far, but I am going to take the rust off. So it's time to put these new rails in their places in the dresser. I don't have a brad nailer or staple gun or anything like that, so I'm choosing to screw it in and I'm using these countersink bits so that the screw head will sit below the surface of the wood and won't gouge the grooves in the drawers. I expected this to be a little bit harder, but I could actually kind of see where this used to be. So I actually got lucky. I didn't have to reposition anything and it worked the first time, but I could see how this could be very difficult to line up if you couldn't see where the rails had been before. I'm just adding these details back on and of course I dropped the nail. I have big fingers and it's uh, not always great when handling little nails and screws. So that coat of clear wax had set overnight and I'm going in with the dark wax now. And you have to work really quick with this stuff so I'm putting it on as quickly as I can and then wiping it off as quickly as I can. Once again, I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of the Buy Me A Tea supporters and people that have sent me things from my Amazon wishlist. 
I appreciate the support from each and every one of you. It never goes unnoticed and you guys are amazing. Alright, it is time for a trip down memory lane. This is the piece I started with. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video when I posted a photo of this on my community page, a lot of you thought, oh my gosh, don't change it, it's really cool as it is. And it is, I love that sort of grungy look to it. But I wanted to sort of refine it a little bit and I wanted to see if I could make it look a little bit more high-end by turning those sort of mediocre material drawer faces into something that looks like a higher-end wood like cherry or mahogany. So I can't wait to see what you guys think of this. I'm a little scared, <laughs> can't lie. I'm gonna show you first with the original pulls on and then I'm gonna show you with those few pulls that I replaced. And let me know in the comments which you prefer. 